We're here today at the 2011 cotton production meeting held in Jackson County. With us we have David Wright, who is a research and extension agronomist at NFREC in Quincy, and he is talking to us today about managing nutrients and how we produce cotton. Okay, uh, thank you, Doug. Yes, just some high points of, of uh, what I have talked about is that um, the cotton is a crop that does require a lot of management and the fertility aspects of it is, is very important. Uh, the things that, that we normally stress is, is soil testing is a very important part of any nutrient management uh, system. And nitrogen is, is key in that because cotton is a pretty high user of nitrogen and you can overdo it and, and actually um, use too much nitrogen. But in general, uh, our recommendations are for about uh, 90 pounds on most of our soils, uh, depending upon the rotation. Um, and splitting those applications is important. Uh, cotton does need uh, some nitrogen uh, to get started uh, in the spring and, and normally when we plant it we would like to uh, apply about uh, 20 pounds of nitrogen and then by um, squaring, which is usually about 40, 45 days after planting, uh, we would put the, uh, the rest of the side dressed ap application out, which uh, many growers will use 60 pounds of, of nitrogen at, at that point. The uh, phosphorus and potassium in general can be put out at planting time on most of our soils. Uh, we do have growers who uh, are on very sandy soils and by towards the end of the season after uh, deer and flower and, and bowl uh, set, they will start seeing a lot of disease come, come on the leaves and, and in many cases this is a uh, an indication that they may have a potassium deficiency. If that is the case on, on those soil types, um, I would definitely consider splitting the potassium application, putting some out at planting time, and then putting the rest out uh, 30 to 40 days after planting, which would carry uh, that on through. Uh, most of the, the nitrogen management should be done by 60 days, which, which uh, um, is into the bloom period, uh, we have found that uh, nitrogen applications after the third week of bloom essentially does not make any difference on yield, so those applications in many cases are often wasted. Uh, as far as irrigation, um, cotton is, is, uh, does respond to irrigation in dry years. We had a dry year in 2010. Uh, generally, the, uh, we need about an inch of, of uh, either rain or, or irrigation uh, water every uh, 10 to 14 days uh, up to first square, uh, maybe an inch every uh, 8 to 10 days uh, from squaring till bloom and then during the bloom period which is usually an 8 week period uh, we need an uh, inch to 2 inches per week, uh, usually closer to 2 inches. Uh, and that usually corresponds with July and August and then after that period we can drop down again to an inch every uh, 10 days. Uh, we have done quite a bit of work with cattle, the impacts of, of cattle on, on fertility and, and that has, has uh, made a, a major impact uh, on cotton. Uh, we have found that cattle will recycle 100 to $120 worth of nutrients in that top foot of soil as compared to just the cover crop. So they're continuously eating that uh, winter grazing, recycling those nutrients, and they're staying in the top foot. When we've planted cotton behind it, we have averaged for the last three years from 150 to 450 uh, more pounds of lint in the cotton. So we are seeing that this year-round utilization of the land is important. It can uh, help to aid cotton yields, uh, plus you're getting benefit. Uh, it's a risk management tool as well because the livestock are in, in your system. You're getting benefits from those cover crops and erosion control as well as uh, we're recycling nutrients. Well, good information. Uh, again, thank you to David Wright at our 2011 cotton production meeting. 
And I'm Doug Mayo with Jackson County Extension Service.